in India. A team of armed bandits takes two hostages on a cross-country ride to a villa far away from the city. The captive men, who know each other, panic as they prepare to face the operation's ringleader. Once there, he asks one of the men, Sonny, about the origins of the fake bandnote in his hand. Prior to this event, Sonny, a uniquely gifted painter, makes a living creating beautiful but copycat artwork for bargain prices. He laments that his grandfather, Madhav, who paints legitimate pieces of art, is not famous enough to enter stardom in the Indian art scene. Fortunately, he employs his nephew, along with his best friend Firas, in his well-established publishing company, Crandy Magazine. As Sonny finishes a new painting for Madhav, the pair discuss the future of the company, hoping their magazines will spread to a broader audience online. During break time, he is reminded of how the company started. When he and Firaz were kids, they secretly sold the newspapers on every street corner and hid the earnings in Madhav's drawer to surprise him. As the business grew, they were taught how to manage and operate the printing press. When the time came that company's earnings slowed down, they managed to survive by eating buns. Their job kept their minds sharp and always focused on money. Later in the day, Sonny spends time with his affluent girlfriend, Ananya, making out in a car parking lot. She plans to party at the lavish nightclub, Club Velocity, for New Year's Day, inviting him to join her so he does not feel left out. Shortly after, he secretly goes to the club, intending to gain entry without any help from Ananya. Firas, who accompanies him, advises him to be wary of Ananya's social circle since he is a poor boy and clearly out of her league. Unfortunately, upon seeing the two men's appearance, the snotty manager demands 27,000 rupees for the entrance fee, believing they are from a lower class. Enraged by the response, Sonny freaks out, and the pair are escorted out of the establishment. Feeling defeated, they call it quits and decide to throw a party on a rooftop. Later at night, Ananya quickly stops by to awkwardly tell Sonny she will be on her way to the club with a date, feeling bad she did not get to vouch for his entrance fee. Shortly after she leaves, Sonny and Firas talk about their troubling situation of living in a middle-class society and continually being shoved away by the upper class. Still, both hope their struggles will end through the new year. The following day, Sonny comes in for work when he becomes worried seeing his grandfather and the staff convening in his office due to an overdue bank loan payable within the month. With no other means to earn the funds, Madhav decides to shut down the business and write his last editorial article. Later, Sonny and Fira stop by the collection agency to plead with the boss, Mr. Rattenlul, for an extension. However, their appeal is denied since the owner's son is dubious that they will come up with the money because of their line of work. That night, Sonny peeks inside his grandfather's office, seeing him hold back tears as he struggles to print his editorial page. As he leaves, he prints out the article and reads about Cranty being one of the flames of revolution, hoping the spirit of rebellion will be kept alive even if they close down. Shortly after, he and Firaz calculate their remaining funds, believing more is needed even if they sell their possessions and all the paintings. With no other option left, the latter decides to visit a friend, Anise, the next day to ask for another job. Luckily, he brings him to meet a known counterfeit magnate, Sketchmania, who is looking for a new artist and ready to pay a huge amount. However, after hearing the good news, Sonny cooks up an idea to forge their own band notes, believing in his grandfather's words to master the system and use their printing press skills to secretly establish a counterfeit business. To start, he creates a rough draft of designs after studying all the new security features installed on the updated 500 and 1000 band notes printed with Gandhi's picture, even going so far as to copy the lines and micro letters detailed around it. For the next step, the pair watch video tutorials on creating a master die, which is tedious as their printer only spits out one color at a time. They then use a strip of glitter for the security strip and stamp the serial numbers in different sizes. Lastly, they dip the fake bills in tea to make them appear like used band notes. Later, they test it out while buying a drink in a tavern, only to get chased out by the barkeep and the patrons after discovering the ruse. Meanwhile, in Nepal, counterfeiting kingpin Mansur Dalil is traveling to a hotel, not knowing the local police and bank fraud agents have set up a sting operation to capture him. Once there, the head officer, Michael Vedneagam, confronts him, determined to catch his nemesis after years of evading the law. However, as the kingpin is taken outside, his henchmen appear, shooting the police to allow Mansour to escape. While on the run, he taunts Michael by killing one of his colleagues in an alley before leaving in an unmarked vehicle. Elsewhere, Sonny is still determined to perfect the counterfeit currency, believing the pair will need to acquire the correct type of paper for a new print. Almost immediately, they brainstorm about using the paper on the yellow pages as the base for the band notes, bleaching and sticking two pages together to achieve the perfect weighted feel. Fortunately, upon testing one bill at the tavern, Sonny rejoices as he buys a drink without issue. Much later, at the villa, Mansour confronts the pair as he is told about their operation. Refusing to harm Firas, Sonny watches as a henchman shoots his friend in the shoulder. Sonny then flashes back to childhood, 
when his father would often relocate him to different areas in India whenever he ran out of money, making it look like a game called Anytime, Anywhere. Eventually, he is brought to the station to see his grandfather in another city but is abandoned on the train. Hoping to find him, he draws on the train's platforms to get noticed, only to meet a young Firas, who encourages him they will make money with his drawings. While making some profit, he is eventually found by his grandfather, who happily takes him and Firas to his home. Elsewhere, an officer of the Reserve Bank of India, Mega Vyas, is presenting a revolutionary software in a chip, CT600, that detects counterfeits, only to be downplayed by the committee members. After the presentation, Michael pleads with Finance Minister Pawan Galat for additional resources to follow up on Mansour's escape and the counterfeit businesses, but is denied since the minister is more focused on his upcoming election campaign. Meanwhile, days before the men get captured by Mansour, Firaz impresses Annie's and his grandfather with one of their counterfeit bills but receives a warning not to get caught. Later, he and Sonny meet up with a high-ranking smuggler, Lacked, to prove their bills will look and feel as authentic as an ordinary banknote. Impressed, the man agrees with their price for the counterfeit bills, provided they can output two crores worth of banknotes in two weeks, a challenge Sonny is willing to accept. Meanwhile, a drunk Michael blackmails the finance minister to get his attention and approval of his division's team for a new mission to find Mansour. Later, Uncle Yasser. An employee at Cranty confronts Sonny about the banknote sketches hidden in the drawer. The artist reasons that he is willing to invest his time in his illegal activity to save the company and to spare his grandfather's personal feelings. After successfully paying for his meal in a local diner with a counterfeit bill, Yasser becomes convinced to help, revealing he will need more equipment, including a large amount of ink and paper, to grow the operation. Elsewhere, Mega is on her way to work while talking to her mother about loans and her single life. Upon reaching her cubicle, she is given a counterfeit banknote, prompting her to contact Michael to share the evidence. That night, Sonny keeps his grandfather amused at home, making dinner while Firaz and Yasser work secretly inside the office, acquiring a more sophisticated printing machine and washing machine. During their conversation, he promises to take him on vacation soon to aid in his diabetic recovery. The following morning, Michael visits Minister Powin, excusing his behavior from the other night and asks him to approve his counterfeiting operation in exchange for giving him all the credit once they succeed. Later at night, unable to acquire bulks of paper from a reputable vendor, Sonny and Firaz ask Annie's his help to break inside the factory and steal the paper shipment. Using his henchmen, they accost all the guards and round them in a corner, only for one to escape, forcing Firaz and Sonny to hilariously stand guard while the others leave. After controlling the situation, the pair hurriedly search the factory for 45 GSM rolls of paper, successfully hauling several bulks they find on a high shelf and loading them in a truck provided by Annie's. Almost immediately, printing the two crores worth of currency commences, with Sonny, Firaz, and Yasser working tirelessly for days to achieve the perfect bills. Sometime later, after the counterfeit papers are cut, fined, and packed, they deliver the supply to the smuggler, who approves and hands over the payment while noting he will need their services again. Eventually, the business keeps growing as the team expands its merchandise as they give Annie's and Sketch Mania their cut of the bills. Later, Sonny and Firas done the office of Mr. Ranthowell with two duffel bags loaded with all they owe, including interest and a bonus amount for the owner's son. They then go home to tell Matt have the good news that the company is kept afloat, with the false pretense that the money used to pay for the loan came from Sonny's paintings. Later at night, Sonny invites Ananya for dinner to celebrate his success, only to feel slighted by seeing her pay for their meal with her credit card. Things take a sad turn as she reveals she is pressured by her parents to get married and that she might have to stop seeing him. After dinner, he tells the waiter to return her credit card and leaves some counterfeit cash. Simultaneously, Mega finds an excuse to quickly finish her date that her mom suggested a meeting. Suspecting one of the bills to be counterfeit, she inspects the restaurant's cash register to follow her lead. Meanwhile, Michael is phoned by the finance minister, who reluctantly approves his new task force to influence his election campaign significantly. Simultaneously, Sonny suggests to Yasser they can keep the business growing if they continue counterfeiting bills, which he reluctantly allows as long as it is kept away from the view of the workers. Later, while Michael tells his second-in-command, Shekwar, the good news about their task force, Mega and her colleague examine the counterfeit band note, peeling it off to reveal two papers sandwiched together. Simultaneously, Sonny, Firas, and Yasser continue printing the bills after the workers leave their shifts. Sometime after, Michael debriefs the members of the counterfeiting and currency fraud analysis and research team on the strategic ways money in India is counterfeit and passed on to other neighboring countries as authentic currency. They review the dossier of criminal mastermind Mansour Dowell, his right-hand man and uncle, Jidu Kaka, and his distributor, Bill. Simultaneously, Mega appeals to her boss to allow further investigation on the counterfeit bill she discovered, but he dismisses her theories, 
claiming their division cannot escalate the matter like law enforcement. Later, after Michael borrows a small stash of counterfeit bills from the evidence lab, he treats Shekor by buying him an iPhone while also purchasing another iPhone he intends to gift to his six-year-old son, Viam. Simultaneously, after Annie's informs Sonny and Firaz about a new sale, the duo visits a nightclub to meet with Lax Boss, a rival politician to the finance minister, who asks for 20 million worth of counterfeit bills. Due to the campaign's kickoff in the next two weeks, Lack mentions everyone will be too busy, so the pair must be in charge of delivering the shipment across the border to Surat. The following morning, they tell Yasser about the upcoming delivery, which worries him as they risk their small-time operation if they are caught by border patrol. Elsewhere, Michael tries to surprise his son with the iPhone for his birthday, much to his ex-wife's consternation. After the party, she chastises him for being an absent father to Viam. Angry that his alcoholism drove him away from his responsibilities in the family, he leaves feeling defeated, even though he wishes to repair their broken relationship. The next morning, Mega convinces her boss to get her a recommendation to visit the CCFART headquarters in Delhi to submit her evidence. Simultaneously, Firaz and Yasser apply for a business license, using their grandfather for the application. After the name MKG Publishing is registered, they hire a bilingual woman as their customer sales agent. Later, Mega presents her resume to Michael, pleading with him to recruit her to his new task force as a security printing expert. To test her skills, he hands her a counterfeit band note, which is quickly flagged by the CT600 software. She promises that the chip can be installed in every cash machine in the metro. Convinced, Michael officially hires her for the task. Almost immediately after onboarding, she presents the evidence of the counterfeit band note from the restaurant, hoping the department will look into the small-time operation in her locale. Michael dismisses her, believing their priority is the capture of Mansoor. However, after he leaves the office, she uses his stamp to approve her paper for the investigation, presenting it shortly after to a sub-inspector, Shin, at the police station and convincing him to take action. Later at night, Meg and the sub-inspector drive to the location of the printing press owned by Matt Hav as Sonny and Firaz busy themselves with another batch of new prints. Yasser immediately spots the police car, alerting the pair as they turn off the lights and peek through the window, hoping they are not found out. The police call Yasser's phone, forcing him to confront Mega while the duo clears out any evidence of their counterfeiting operation. Though he tries to reason out with them, Mega is suspicious when she hears the printing press turn off and demands entry. Luckily, as soon as the search commences, the young men successfully clean up and hide in the office. As Sunny prepares to knock Mega out with a wrench, she gets a call from an angry Michael to call off her search, deeming it an illegal raid activity after getting a report from the local police branch. After their close shave with law enforcement, they haul the rest of the printed batches and prepare to lock down the factory when Sonny sees Matt have accidentally discovered the counterfeit band notes scattered in his office. Fortunately, this encounter does not reveal their secret operation, as his grandfather surmises the bills as the money he had mistakenly kept to pay his loans. Yasser tells Sonny that he is suffering from occasional memory loss due to his old age. He becomes more determined to push through with the deal now that they are cleared of wrongdoing, much to his uncle's disapproval. The following morning, Mega apologizes for her behavior and is warned not to disobey the task force rules again. Simultaneously, Sunny and Firaz drive the counterfeit cash to Surat, passing through a military checkpoint inspection along the way due to the shipment piled over boxes filled with film telephone directories and alcohol acquired days earlier. After bargaining with the patrolman, the pair drive to an undisclosed location to meet the politician for the exchange, which goes smoothly. Later at night, they celebrate their sale by partying at the nightclub. Unfortunately, the pair return home to receive a scolding from a furious Madhav, who uncovers their operation through Yasser and sends them away from the printing press. Sonny realizes he screwed up, ashamed he is turning out like his thieving father. The following day, Minister Powan holds a press conference celebrating the success of small and medium enterprises while launching Mega's counterfeit scanner, renamed Danarchak. During lunch, he approaches Michael and his team to show his appreciation, though wishing to keep everything about the next phase of the operation quiet to not interfere with his campaign. Later, Michael fetches his son for a day outside, only to bring him back home after four hours suffering from food poisoning due to a meal they shared. The next day, after selling one of his forged paintings, Sonny meets with Yasser for lunch and inquires about his grandfather. He tells him he should try to visit and apologize every week, knowing he will be forgiven eventually. Still, Sonny does not feel guilty about creating counterfeit money since it helped the business stand afloat. Meanwhile, Mega has been suffering from sleepless nights as her landlady demands the rent. A friendly colleague offers help by letting her move in with her temporarily until she can get back on her feet. Simultaneously, Michael becomes angry when he receives the divorce letters from Rikaz's lawyer, which will determine custody of their son. He steps out on the rooftop to smoke and calls Rikaz's boyfriend to relay a message that he does not intend to leave their marriage. 
Later, Yasser becomes alarmed when he discovers Madhav has disappeared. He calls Sonny, who immediately rushes to the printing press to help find him. They end up filing a police report at the station, but a stressed out Sonny storms inside the chief's office, pleading with the police to prioritize a missing person's case instead of pocketing money from the government. Due to his outburst, he and Firaz are temporarily locked up for the night. Simultaneously, Michael visits his in-law's house, asking for advice on repairing his broken relationship with Rakawa while believing he is the culprit of their fallout. Sadly, her parents tell him they respect her decision to divorce him, considering she has gone through a tough time raising their grandchild while he focuses on work. Later, while Yasser bails the young men out of prison, he tells them Madhav is recovered after wandering in an alley due to his dementia. As they get the old man to sleep in his bed, Madhav awakens, telling Sonny about dreaming of his late mother making him his favorite dish, lentil rice. The three men agree to take him to a doctor to diagnose his worsening condition. The following morning, Michael is informed by the task force that Mega Scanner, Dan Rickshack, has been deployed in every bank and financial institution across several parts of the country. Feeling impressed, he commends Mega and treats everyone to a party. Later at the hospital, the physician advises the group to contact a specialist to surgically operate on Madhav's brain to alleviate his dementia. That night, during the party at a local bar, Michael confronts journalist Kamala Thacker about a past incident, revealing he has not moved on from it. On the drive home, Shekwar explains to Mega his boss's downward spiral started when he was framed for 13 cases and demoted after a significant bust operation went wrong, orchestrated by Mansoor. Sadly, his former partner, Dave, could not handle the humiliation and killed himself, much to Michael's disappointment. The next day, Sonny visits a recuperated Madhav in his office, relieved he is back to work, though still having bouts of forgetfulness as he works. Sometime after, news stories about the Danmark check scanner talk about how the police have successfully intercepted counterfeit operators and syndicates nationwide using the device. Eventually, these get the attention of Mansoor, who is operating his illegal business in Jordan. He is presented with a fake band note that surprisingly passes through a counting machine embedded with the chip. Jitu informs him the bill was created by a man only known as the artist. Tracking their location, Mansoor's men in India kidnap Sunny and Firaz at night and take them to a remote villa outside town. In the morning, Sunny is taken to see Mansoor, who is visibly impressed with his forgery skills. He lets him inspect one of the bills forged by his operation, which Sunny remarks is easily detectable on the scanner because of its flaws. Mansoor takes him to the poolside, presenting him with good clothes he will wear as his new artist for hire. Sonny is initially hesitant, reasoning that his counterfeiting operation was for his grandfather's business to recover. Still, Mansoor believes greed will be enough to motivate him to utilize his skills for his syndicate to flourish all over India while rendering Danrakshak useless. Sonny accepts the deal, and he and Firaz are freed and brought home. Though Firaz advises they lie low for a few days, Sonny reveals he joined Mansoor's operation to escape their impoverished situation and start earning for themselves. His friend reluctantly follows through with his decision, provided he does not make his grandfather as an excuse to counterfeit. 